Good evening and welcome to the Allentown Central Catholic Virtual Open House. Tonight's session will be a virtual tour of our school. My name is Kara Maskell. I'm the Director of Admissions at Allentown Central Catholic. Today I'm going to be joined by 10 of our Viking uh, Ambassador students. Um, the students would normally be the ones that would give you, um, they'd be your tour guides for our live tours during our winter open house. With us tonight, we have Erica Dietz, Robert Garza, Maura Manzella, Ashley Meskill, Jack McGorry, Gwen Minogue, Emma Osiander, Lauren Christus, Tyler Shifko, and Monica Vargo. And I thank them all for being part of today's presentation. Now let us begin with a prayer today, this evening, that was prepared by our very own Father Mark Cyrils. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dear God, our Father, we praise and thank you for the blessings of this day and of our Allentown Central Catholic family. We ask your hand of blessing to stretch out upon us and the families who are joining us tonight. Give us discerning hearts to seek and to do your will in all things. And may we follow closely the path your son has set out for us with the help and prayers of our blessed Mother Mary and all the saints. Keep us safe and help us to grow each day in faith, hope, and love. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, as I said, tonight we are um, going to take you on a, a virtual tour. Uh, our hope was that we would be in our school and we'd be using some videos to show us our school, but Mother Nature kind of got in our way today. Um, so our students are at their homes, as am I, and we're going to be uh, giving you a tour with some photos that we have um, and the dialogue from our students. So um, with that, we'll start our tour. Allentown Central Catholic was founded in 1926 by the Reverend Leo Gregory Fink. And it, we have expanded beyond our humble beginnings as Masson Memorial School into a major educational complex. The addition of Rockney Hall in the 1940s and Barry Hall in 1964 completed our educational facility, which today provides a Christ-centered, competitive, and balanced academic curriculum with robust extracurricular activities that serve more than 600 students. Allentown Central Catholic is accredited by the Middle States Association, the Pennsylvania Department of Education, and is recognized as a Blue Ribbon School of Excellence. Allentown Central Catholic continues to be a highly regarded leader in the academic development of students who continually demonstrate that excellence in their, their, that excellence in the performance on national standardized tests of academic achievement. As you can see on this slide, um, let me get to my notes. As you can see on this chart, year over year, Allentown Central Catholic has SAT scores higher than any of the public schools in the Lehigh Valley and many of the private schools as well, but their, um, many of their um, scores are not published publicly. In addition, 99% of Allentown Central Catholic students continue their education at a collegiate level. This speaks not only to the academics of our school, but it also speaks to the culture of the classrooms. Your student will be in, a cla in classes surrounded by other students who are seeking to attend college in the future. Allentown Central Catholic is situated in the heart of Allentown, surrounded by St. Luke's Sacred Heart Hospital, Sacred Heart School, and Sacred Heart Church. We call this community the heart of the city. Allentown Central Catholic co cooperates with Sacred Heart's um, St. Luke's campus uh, to provide a program called Inspiring Hearts. That Inspiring Hearts program is for students who are interested in the medical field um, and they're able to shadow doctors and nurses over the course of about seven visits uh, to the hospital during the school day at different times during the semester. In addition, we also have student teaching internships at Sacred Heart School. And these are just a couple of the advantages that we feel being in the heart of the city uh, provides our students. We feel that we're not just a building in downtown Allentown, but our goal is to always be part of the community. Our central city project, or as we lovingly recall it, our CCP, is our way of giving back to the community that we're in. We teach our students that community service should be part of their life, not only as a student at Central, but as adults wherever they live. 
With that, I would like to now turn over to the interior of our building. I would like to introduce Lauren Pristis and she will tell you, she'll be the first to start giving you our visual tour. All right, hi, I'm Lauren Pristis. I'm a senior here at Central and I'm involved in cheerleading, Viking ambassadors and student council. And first we're gonna start with the 100s. So the 100s hallway is home to our theology and English departments, as well as our guidance office, media center and broadcast room. So at Central student students take four years of theology and we offer both CP and honors level classes of theology for every grade level. And each semester is focused on a different aspect of our faith. And these can include parts of the Bible, different meanings behind the stories of the Bible, morality, philosophy, all those types of things. So then the English department has CP honors and AP level courses offering 11 different classes for students to choose from. So I've taken um, honors English freshman and sophomore year, and then I took AP my junior and senior years. And all of the teachers prepare you so well for future English classes and for college level essays. And Mr. Clifford, especially last year, really taught you how to write essays well and very well thought out in a short amount of time. Um, and I, in my opinion, that's gonna prepare us so well for college next year. And Mr. Beza this year is really helping us um, think outside of the box and analyze um, different works a lot deeper. Um, in 2019, we created an art production studio with a broadcast room, control desk, and editing equipment, which added broadcast journalism to our English um, department course offerings. So several times a month, we share informational videos, student interviews, and more to our YouTube channel, Viking News Network. And I'm taking broadcast journalism this year, and I've had such a fun time being, being able to use my creativity during school and create fun different projects. So this year so far, I've made a couple different videos for the football team that will be posted on the Viking News Network YouTube channel very soon. And right now the class is working on like a fun Christmas holiday video. And it's a really great class if you want to use like your creativity or you're thinking about going into production or video editing in college in the future. And there's a student in our class that wants to major in that in college. So it's a great opportunity for that as well. Um, then the Media Center offers access to computers and printers before and after school for students to finish up assignments or print out any necessary materials for class. And during the day, it hosts um, study halls, tutoring sessions, and VHS online courses. So I took AP Psychology last year on VHS, and I found it to be super beneficial to be able to, be able to take a class online. So I would be assigned all of my readings and all my assignments on Wednesday, and then they would all be due the following Tuesday night. And my teacher was super helpful and understanding. And I've heard the same from a lot of other people that took VHS classes. And it just really helped me to be able to do my assignments on my own time each week and be able to have the opportunity to take additional classes that aren't offered here at Central. So I definitely recommend that if you're thinking about going into a specific field and Central doesn't offer um, a class related to that, there's definitely one on VHS. They offer so many different classes that you can definitely take. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Mora. All right. Hi everyone, my name is Maura Manzella and I'm currently a senior at Central Catholic. I'm the secretary of NHS and Key Club and I'm a representative in student council and I'm also part of Viking Ambassadors. And so today I'm going to be telling you about the 200s hallway in our lovely Masson Hall, which primarily holds our administrative offices. So these offices include our receptionist, our attendance manager, our principal and vice principal, our chaplain and campus ministry, the director of studies, director of admissions, our international student coordinator, and our student activities coordinator. So whether you're checking in with our director of studies or director of admissions, Mrs. Meskill, for a shadow day or looking to pick up a form for your service hours in campus ministry, or even just joining us for a visit after signing in at the kiosk one floor below, the 200s pretty much has a all in one place for you. And there's also one classroom in the 200s, which is Mr. Bach's class. He teaches almost all senior theology classes and I'm currently taking his Honors Theology 4, where we spend the first sem semester discussing philosophy and the second connecting the study to our faith. And as someone who's looking to study philosophy and 
the brain in general in the future, I found Mr. Bach's class incredibly interesting and incredibly insightful. And actually, in just the first three months of this class, we've covered some of the most famous works of Plato, Socrates, and Aristotle, which is so amazing and something that you wouldn't really expect from a theology class, but it's actually been very helpful. And also I've heard from some alumni of Central that Mr. Bach was really a key influence on their critical thinking abilities and has helped them succeed in their college level theology, English, and history courses. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Emma. Hi, I'm Emma Ossiander and I'm a senior at Central. I'm involved in the mock trial team and the varsity softball team. And today I'm going to talk to you about the 300s. So one floor above the 200s at the very top of our main staircase, the atrium, um, the 300s is home to most of our history classes and our art studio. Um, our social studies department offers CP honors and AP level courses and um, includes electives like psychology, modern US history and art history. In total, there are 13 different classes in the social studies department. Uh, before graduating, all students will take one year of world history, one year of American history, one year of government, and you can choose to take an elective junior year. Uh, personally, I, choose to take, I chose to take AP US history junior year due to my long, um, long time lo love of history. Uh, Mr. Smith prepared us really well for the AP exam last year. And this year, Mrs. Rolston, our government teacher for AP, has provided a great insight into the inner workings of our government, um, especially in this election year. Uh, these two classes have greatly influenced my choice to study history in college. Um, in our art department, um, ACCHS students can take three years of art beginning their sophomore year as a minor class one day a week. And then as upperclassmen, uh, two levels of art can be taken daily as full credit classes. Our art teacher will, will work with students with all levels of creativity from someone who simply enjoys learning new art techniques to a student who wants to study art in college. Part of the Art 1 and Art 2 programs includes creating a portfolio of work that if a student chooses can be shared with college during the college application process. And in addition, our art department offers a video production class to complement the English department's broadcast journalism class. And with that, I'm going to pass it on to Gwen. Hi everyone, my name is Gwen Minogue. I'm a senior at Central and I'm involved in Key Club National Honor Society Student Council and I also play lacrosse. And today I'm gonna to talk about the 400s, which is home to all of our science and technology classes. So in the summer of 2016, we invested over half a million dollars in our science department with a grant given from the Stabler Foundation. So we have seven state-of-the-art lab classrooms and each one is designed for the specific course that's being taught in that room. So all students take biology and chemistry their freshman and sophomore years. And then as upperclassmen, we have such a wide variety of elective sciences to choose from. So we can explore higher levels of the sciences we've already taken. We can take like biology two or chem two, or we can explore something new like physics or anatomy. So this year is my second year of AP physics and I'm also taking biochemistry. And I've really enjoyed both of those with Mr. Rosenberger and Mrs. Wachilla. They're really good teachers and I know like they're preparing me so well for college science classes. And there are also so many ways to augment the science curriculum through different after school activities as well. So there's the Pennsylvania Junior Academy of Science, PJAS, or Science Olympiad. Um, I'm currently the president of Science Olympiad and it's a really good organization because there's so many opportunities to explore different areas of science that you might not get in your classes. So for example, there's different building events. If you're interested in engineering, it's a really good opportunity to do that. And there's different like genetic events, protein modeling events that really help you to learn things that you might not get in all your classes. And in the past, we've been really successful as a club. So we've qualified for states uh, like almost every year in the past 15 years. And this year, even though we have to do our competitions virtually, we're still super involved and ready to compete online. So in addition to the classroom renovations, we have enhanced our science and technology curriculum by adding a two-year engineering program called Project Lead the Way, a forensic science dual enrollment, dual enrollment course, and our CompTIA Academy. So students can graduate from Central equipped with not only science credits for college, but even an IT certification. 
And these additions now provide over 20 different science and technology course options, ranging from college prep to honors and AP, including four classes that are dual credit with DeSales University. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Jack. Hey everybody, I'm Jack McGorry. I'm a senior at Central and I play football and lacrosse here. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you about Barry Hall where our math and foreign language departments are located. Our math departments have CP, honors, and AP level courses. And these courses range from algebra one all the way to calculus. The highest level of math we offer are AP calculus where you can take AB or BC and AP statistics. And I got the opportunity to take AP statistics last year with the first year of it being offered. And it was a great class. Dr. Wilson did a great job of keeping everyone entertained. And I think everybody came out with that class wanting to do something along the line of statistics in college. And I definitely was inspired to do something along the line because just how awesome the class was. And just, it was a really great class environment. And this year I'm taking honors calculus, which is included in our dual enrollment agreement with the sales. And this means students who earn a grade of 80 or an 80 or higher get a college credit course and or a college credit. And all six of our dual enrollment classes with DeSales offer student college credit at no cost. And our foreign language departments offer classes in Spanish, French, German, and Latin. And we offer five levels of Spanish, including an AP course, and four levels of both French and German, and an introduction to Latin for juniors and seniors. And if you wanna go about, like above, beyond the classes we offer here in the building, uh, or you wanna take a different language, you can take that with the online VHS program. And now I'm gonna pass it off to Ashley. Hi guys, my name is Ashley Meskill. Uh, I'm a senior at Central as well. And some of the stuff I'm involved in includes the Spring Musical, um, NHS, um, Best Friends Forever Club, Student Council and Viking Ambassadors. So I'm gonna talk about our campus chapel and religious life at Central. So on the second floor of Barry, just below where all the math and foreign language classes are, is our campus chapel, the Memorial Monsignor Deity Chapel of Notre Dame Duloc. Our, cha our chaplain, Father Searles, holds daily mass, daily morning mass at 7.30 a.m. before the start of school. This past Lent, before everything got shut down in March, part of my uh, Lenten sacrifice was going to morning mass every morning before school, or as often as I could. And it was really cool because I'd never taken advantage of this opportunity before, even though it's announced on morning announcements every morning. And the attendance wasn't always huge, but there was always a few teachers there, a few students, and it was a really good way to start the day. It always put me in a really good mood. And it's just awesome that we have that as an option for all students to start their morning with. And our sports teams often use the chapel to, to host a small mass before heading off to big games. Um, our larger school-wide masses are held twice a month in Rockney Hall, but the chapel is still a really cool place for smaller masses. In addition, the chapel is used for adoration. Once a month, several theology classes will have the opportunity to spend a class in guided adoration in the chapel. Uh, Central likes to bring in guest speakers from all across the country. Some we're familiar with from past years, some we're not, but it's always really cool to have that time to spend with uh, Jesus in a really unique way. When our entire school participates in adoration, we use Mass and Auditorium as pictured here. The picture on the bottom right of your screens is the burning bush around which our 40 hours retreat is centered. So we actually just um, had our 40 hours retreat on Tuesday through Friday of last week. Usually it's a two day um, retreat opportunity, but because of the hybrid model that we're using for learning right now, we expanded it to a four day. Um, 40 hours is one of the coolest days of the whole year and everyone has so much fun. It's a really fun time to just spend time with your entire class, like all the seniors, all the juniors get to be together. So people you wouldn't normally have class with, you get to spend time with. Listening to speakers, um, live music from Sean Malloy, who comes to visit us every year, and in adoration. And it's also really cool because um, a lot of times the partner schools will send students over. So incoming freshmen are oftentimes familiar with 40 hours, or at least part of what it is, but they get to truly be a part of it for the first time when they're freshmen and then every year after that. 40 hours fulfills one of the two retreat requirements that all students must meet each year as long as they're present in school that day. But there's a lot of other ways to fulfill the rest of that retreat requirement. Um, each grade level has their own retreat that's hosted at school. So for freshmen, that's another opportunity to spend time with your whole class and talk about things you might not get to talk about much in the classroom. There are shrine hops in different cities like Philadelphia, New York, and then 
as a senior, you have the opportunity to go on a Kairos retreat, which is one of the like best moments of senior year for a lot of people. I was lucky enough to be chosen as a leader my junior year, so I've gotten the chance to attend already. And this year I'll be leading the retreat for my classmates when it happens. We're hopefully gonna have that in either January, March or April of this year, but it's such a beautiful time, like really formative in faith and it really unites the senior class in faith, which is such a central part of our education at Central. And then the chapel is always a beautiful, a beautiful place to spend a few quiet moments with Christ present in the Eucharist. If you're having a tough day or just need some time to yourself or alone, it's always open, just kind of how Christ is always present in our education. And with that, I'm going to pass it off to Monica Vargo. Hi, everyone. My name is Monica Vargo, and I'm a senior at Central Catholic. I'm involved in volleyball, student council, Central City Project. I'm a Kairos leader, and I'm also the Vicette. Um, today, I'm going to talk to you about our cafeteria, which is located at the bottom of Barry Hall. So the cafeteria was renovated in the summer of 2016. During the renovation, we, on we not only improved our facilities, we also improved our menu. Students are given so many different options every day. One of my personal favorites is chicken, chicken and fries, always a classic. Students can choose from pre-made offerings or create their own salad or sandwich. I love ordering customized sandwiches from the notorious Deli Master Pat. The cafeteria employees are friendly and always brighten my day. With that being said, Sodexo Food Service is our partner. Students use their school IDs to scan the Sodexo payment system, which parents can easily load via check or online. There are, there are four different possible lunch periods at Central Catholic. A student's lunch time could vary from each day of the week, according to our five-day system. The lunch period is a full 45-minute period, the same length as a classroom period, which is super nice because I often end up finish eating early and I have a lot of time to finish my homework and talk to my friends. Our, coffee, our cafeteria is also commonly used as an extra meeting place for our clubs and activities if other spaces are in use. Viking ambassadors often meet their early mornings for club meetings. The cafeteria is also a backdrop for pictures with Santa and his elves, which is a senior student council event and home of a, of a variety of bake sales and other fundraisers. Sodexo Food Service also holds many fun competitions such as trivia games and cutest pet competitions with many amazing prizes at stake. So that's all for me. Next up, Erica Dietz. Hi, my name is Erica Dietz and I'm a senior here at Central Catholic. I'm a captain of the girls soccer team and I'm currently in the middle of my basketball season. I'm also a part of student council at NHS. One of the most recognizable spaces in the building is Rockney Hall, our gymnasium. When it was originally built in the 1940s, Rockney was the largest venue in the Lehigh Valley, seating more people than any other location. Historic Rockney Hall is home to our basketball, volleyball and wrestling practices and games, as well as our physical education classes. It also includes our Rockney Wall of Fame and is where we all gather as a school for our school masses, pep rallies, school dances, and award ceremonies. In Rockney Hall, the Viking Rumble is a fan favorite cheer used during athletic events. The Rumble is created by students and fans stomping in rhythm on the metal bleachers on both the floor and the balcony levels. The balcony is not only home to the Wall of Fame, but is also commonly used by students as a shortcut to travel to classes. You'll often hear us refer to it as Historic Rockney Hall with over 90 years of banners and plaques lining the walls. This year is super special to me because I'll be a part of these banners forever. This year, girls soccer won the District 11 championship for the first time since 2009, and we will be adding our team's year up on the girls soccer banner. We had a really great year and it's really neat to have all our, our hard work hanging in Rockney and to be a, bar, a part of the school's history. Beneath the bleachers are also our girls and boys locker rooms, one on each side of the gym, and the weight room is on the opposite side. In 2016, we invested $400,000 and installed a new gym floor, upgraded the entrances, and renovated the weight room. The weight room is also open to our, to our athletic teams and is used for gym classes. That's all I have for Rockney, so I'm going to pass it on to Tyler now. Hi, everyone. I'm Tyler Shifko. I'm a senior here at Central. I play football, lacrosse, and I'm also in NHS. I'm going to be talking about athletics today. So um, here at Central, we have over 23 different sports programs, um, all of which have uh, JV and varsity teams. We compete in the PIAA District 11, and our record of success is unmatched within Lehigh Valley. Um, this year alone, as Erica just said, girls soccer won the district championship, and uh, the football team also 
uh, cemented their legacy and won a district championship. And uh, just in my in my four years, uh, lacrosse has also won a district championship my freshman year. And uh, basketball last year, boys basketball, I know, uh, also won a district championship. So uh, each year we have about 20 to 30 senior athletes go on to play at the collegiate level. Uh, my, I myself am going on to the University of Utah next year to play lacrosse. Uh, Jack McGorry, who spoke earlier, he's going to St. Joseph's University to play lacrosse. Uh, we have another student uh, who's going to Syracuse University already on the lacrosse team. Uh, our quarterback, Matt Rauscher, he's going to Lehigh University next year to play football. Um, so college uh, sports is uh, something that Central Catholic allows a lot of student athletes to partake in and, and really allows them to have much success. So whether you're an athlete or a fan, uh, there is nothing quite like sports at ACCHS. Uh, Viking spirit is always truly present in Rockney Hall, Jay Bernie Crum, or anywhere that we play, really. Uh, we, often, we often earn the best student section in Lehigh Valley, uh, the Rocky Rowdies. So it's also, it's awesome. So I'm going to pass it off to Robert now. All right, hey everyone, I'm Robert Garza. I'm a senior at Central. Um, I'm big in stuff with like the musical, drumline. I'm the mascot this year, uh, Kairos leader. Um, I do a lot at Central, let's just put it that way. But um, I'm talking about the extracurriculars, which fitting for me as much as I do. So at Central, we have over 30 different clubs and activities with 80% of the students uh, partaking in them. Uh, here on the slide, we have a couple of different ones that we have at the school. So we have the Pro-Life Club, Pep Club, Best Friends Forever with the Mercy Special Learning School, the Spring Musical, the this is a band and choir, Drumline, Science Olympiad, some, uh, oh shoot, I'm blanking on the name. It's so good. It's Classic Scrimmage Team. We got a lot of them there, but, um. There's a lot of extracurriculars that use Masson and the band room as like their home base type thing, but other ones will use their classrooms as ones like the Science Olympiad and um, the the Academic Bowl team, or the Scholastic Scrimmage team, my bad, my bad. But they'll use their room for uh, their location for having their meetings and practices. But um, as for me, um, as I said before, I use the band room a lot as my place. Um, this year, I'm the choir president and I'm a one of the band leaders for the percussion section. So I spend a lot of time there hanging out with uh, Mr. Albert. He's a fun guy. You should go meet him. He's a great fun guy. He'll talk with you about anything. He's a great guy to just have fun with. But so I spend a lot of my time there. I have to work with him picking out songs for us to perform and um, just getting to know a lot of them uh, about what we do with the um, theatrical department as well, because um, I'm big in stuff with the musical, like I said, and for three of the four years I've been in, hopefully this year as well, I have always participated in the spring musical. That's like my big thing I do every year. Since and since then, I've had to, the pleasure of being in um, my first show, Disaster, which was the one pictured in the picture on the left in the middle. That was such a funny show. I can't believe how much fun I had doing that. And then the following year, I got to do a Drowsy Chaperone, where I was actually the lead. And with that one alone, I was able to do so many things. Um, I learned to tap dance just for that show and roller skate which never in my life would I have thought I'd be roller skating, yet alone blindfolded with that. And then um, this past year, I was also the lead in our show that we were doing. We did a little showcase for called The Pajama Game, which I never think I've sung such a difficult song in my life, but I had so much fun learning and practicing it. But the one thing I can say about all of the clubs and activities at Central is that no matter who's in charge, they're always so welcoming and kind to let you talk and discuss like what you think about doing stuff and how you want to approach the activity and open to suggestions of how might I can improve this or how can I improve myself by doing this. 
the activities are just such fun places for everyone to be. And that's why so many of us do them and how we do so many of them at that. It's just such a fun time to get to know people that you may never have thought you'd ever meet. I never thought I'd meet half the friends I have today. And it's all because of these different activities that I put myself out there with. And everyone is so welcoming to learn and to understand why you enjoy these just as much as them. So I would always be welcome to helping you understand more about those activities and never be afraid to go talk to the teachers about them. They're such, they're such a great time, no matter which one you choose, because you're choosing it for a reason. And that reason is that you love what that um, the activity is about. So it's a great way to just get to know the others that do enjoy that as you as well as others. But um, and then uh, for choir and band, this is my last one. Um, with the choir and band, we may not be big, but we're strong in our people. We're we're strong. We're mighty but strong. We're small but strong. That's what I mean. But um, we get to do so many great things with that. Um, singing just for fun. We sing at the masses and at the different um, activities that we're asked to sing at um, with the band. Our big thing is our drum line, which is also in the picture on the right in the middle. Um, that's a great one. We always will go to the meet, to the grade schools and go perform the drum line for them, get them all uh, hyped up. And we get the, we like to get the student section as hyped up as we can at the football games. It's always so great to see people just having fun and getting to hit the drums as loud as you can. It's just such a great time. Um, but the big, big thing for both of those is that every four years, we get our own big trip. And that trip every four years is we go to Disney World for like a week. So with being a part of the choir, I was able to go my sophomore year. So it'll be coming up in two years that the next group of them will get to go. And that is such a fun trip, especially for me, since I love Disney as much as I do. It's what I, where I want to work in the future. But um, I never, I never thought I would have so much fun just running around Disney with my group of friends. Um, I, we laughed about so many different things. We had our own little inside jokes everywhere we went. Um, my one friend kept getting lost and it was just funny to help him, to track him down every once in a while. But he was always just so happy to be there since it's not somewhere that a lot of people get to go as much with how expensive it is. So just seeing the faces of people that finally got to go there for their first time and be able to be a part of that experience with them was just mind blowing. I've, I've never seen someone so happy as one of my friends just watching the fireworks go off. It was so great. But um, yeah, the extracurriculars overall at Central, there's such a wonderful time. Um, always be open to them and always be willing to try new ones even at that. There's just so much fun to be had with all of them. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mrs. Meskill to finish it off. All right, well, thank you to all of our students uh, for joining us tonight and to share um, uh, what they love most uh, about the, the area that I chose. And I chose the areas for each of those students because it's a, an area that they excel at or they um, I know have a special interest in. So thanks for joining it. What we'd like to do is now show you a video. So this is a video that we created um, pre-COVID. So there are no masks um, and it gives you a chance to see our building um, with students in the hallways and teachers there with them. So with that, we'll start the video. And after the video, we'll have some questions and answers that our students will be available for as well. One of my favorite memories at Central Catholic would have to be coming into school, like finding all my close friends. The March for Life. 40 hours. Winning the District 11 uh, championship in the cross last season. The pep rallies before the Becca games. Personally, one of my favorite memories is being the last person to walk out of Rockney Hall after the homecoming dance and to turn all the lights out and to stand at center court and just look around and think about all the people who've passed through this building. <laughs> Central Catholic is a school where every student can find their home. I love Central Catholic because we are a family. There's so much uh, vibrancy and greatness in that. So we're not just helping our students to live okay lives and to be their most okay selves. 
We're, we're striving for greatness here. There's that quintessential Central Catholic spirit that goes through the students and the teachers. Central Catholic isn't like any other school. Like everyone here is so positive and welcoming. I have such a great connection with my teachers and my friends. Everybody is willing to give you a hand. It kind of feels like having an army support you. I think Central has one of the few schools where people say, I'm excited to go to school today. For family. The kids that I've encountered here all seem to have one thing in common in particular that they strive for excellence. A Central Catholic student is different because of the fact that they are encouraged to really use all of their talents. Our star football player can be the lead in the school musical, can be the top of the class, and they're not stuck in just one box. We still emphasize a core academic curriculum. The teachers, to be honest, they are challenging. Basically be like a college professor and give you work and expect you to do it. They prepare us for not just college, but they prepare us for life. We've added programs each and every year that we think are response to what the students are interested in, but also what today's society and world is telling us. Scheduling has changed to be modernized, technology has changed to be modernized, and yet that compassionate piece, that faith piece that's very important to round out the whole student is still being done at a high level. We're very blessed to have a strong Catholic identity where their faith does matter and they want to live that well too. The spiritual life here is uh, incredible. It makes it a lot easier because if I was going to a public school, I wouldn't be able to have like the free faith that I have at this school. I love attending Central Catholic because I love being open to my faith. My favorite thing to do at Central Catholic as a priest is to celebrate Mass. We come to the altar in an historic Rockney Hall and we celebrate a beautiful liturgy. And when that happens, there's something so beautiful about the spirit of the school that's lifted up. Central Catholic is located in the center city, Valentown, and uh, that affords us some unique opportunities. What it means to be a Viking and a part of the Viking nation isn't just awesomeness and, and excellence on the athletic court or field or in the classroom, but also a vibrancy to be men and women for others. We are a small school, but we're located in the middle of a city, and we just go out and help as many people as we possibly can. When it comes down to it, we just follow what Jesus said and love another as you love yourself, and that's what we do. They are out in the community. They have the garden. They do many outreaches with businesses, Sacred Heart Hospital. So they're just not a building in the community. They really are part of the community. Central Catholic is a school where we encourage students to really be themselves, to find their unique identity, um, to allow themselves to grow and to experience lots of different things. Central Catholic, to me, represents spirit and pride throughout the generations. What makes Central Catholic different from other schools is the tradition in the school. All my grandparents went here. It's just always been my family for me. Recently, I went to our 45th class reunion, and it was great to see my classmates from Allentown Central Catholic, how they've developed as professionals, as parents, and I think Central Catholic had a big part in that development. And there's a quintessential Central Catholic that runs through all their stories, and that pride when they wore the green and gold, and they still feel that attachment. Central Catholic is home. My family, my faith is all tied into this school. I am Central Catholic. Viking proud. If I could describe Central Catholic in one word, it would be awesome. Competitive. Amazing. Rewarding. I am Central Catholic. Viking proud. Faith, tradition, excellence. I am Central Catholic. So um, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, we are open for uh, questions and answers. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any of them as well as um, our students. So, um, so the question is about our sports fields. Do you have plans to build turf fields for grass sports? Um, so the, we have for the past several years had a committee um, that is looking at opportunities um, where we might be able to do that. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have any concrete plans, um, but what we do have, our athletic department works very closely with um, a lot of the fields um, in the area. We use county fields, we use Allentown city fields. We have great relationships with a lot of those fields where um, that we consider our home field. Um, but, um, you know, we're always trying to find a space um, that we could have our own fields. It's kind of a dream of uh, a core group of us and I think a lot of alumni and students, um, but we don't have any concrete plans yet. Okay, let me see. 
Um, all right, anything else? Any other questions you might have? Okay, so um, if you think of any questions in the future or if you're watching this recording um, from our website, um, please know that you can reach out to me. There's my email address and my phone number. Um, you can send me um, an email or give me a call and leave a message or talk to me personally. And I'd be happy to, if I can't answer the question, I'll certainly either find the student or the faculty and staff member um, that could help us. Oh, looks like a couple more. Um, okay, so I have a couple of questions. Can students still shadow? Unfortunately, um, with the current COVID restrictions and because of contact tracing, we've been asked not to allow students from outside. Um, we are doing family tours. So rather than a student shadowing and spending a whole day, a family can call me and the family can come in for a tour. Um, you have to wear masks um, and we have, obviously have to sanitize our hands and those kind of things. So families can take a tour, but our shadows are on hold currently. We're hoping that in the spring um, with the vaccines coming and that all that stuff that we'll be able to hold those in the spring. And we'll, let, we'll have announcements on our website, our social media and to our eighth grade families as soon as we're able to do that. Um, and um, what process is in place for COVID protection? Um, so um, with our COVID protection, what we have, um, uh, we have a team that over the summer, um, when we knew that we were gonna have to follow some restrictions coming into the school year, um, created a great plan. So um, anyone who enters the building has to do a temperature check and wear masks. Uh, and they're also asked to fill out a COVID questionnaire um, so any visitors have to come in. All of our students have their temperature screened every morning. Um, our students um, are in a hybrid schedule. So they come every other day. So at any given day, there's only 50% of our student body in um, and in the classrooms um, and in any of the facilities, they're maintaining um, a six foot distance, which meets those COVID, those CDC guidelines. In addition, um, we have um, kind of plexiglass cubicles um, in some of our areas, our science classrooms, our cafeteria, some areas that um, those are required um, either to you know, have luncheon or um, to during um, labs for the students in the science classrooms. So um, if you'd like to talk to me more about it, um, I'd like to, I could, I would gladly give you more detail. You can also look, um, we do have um, a tab on our website about all of those safety precautions we're taking. Um, okay. So I think that answers all of it. There's another one popped up. Hold on, let me read it out. Oh. So if there's anything else that you have, please don't hesitate. I said, uh, as I said, um, to reach out to me. Um, and we have one more session left. Um, our last session is next Monday, and that's a Q&A session. Um, we'll have um, our principal, our vice principal, our director of studies um, there, and they'll kind of give a recap. Um, and then we'll be open for any questions you have um, and we'll take questions ahead of time as well. So if anybody has those and wants to submit those, again, you can submit those to my email. Um, so with that, what I'd like to do, since there are no more questions, I wanna just thank our students one more time. Um, they had a snow day today. I made them at seven o'clock, put their uniforms back on for today's video. So I really appreciate them uh, taking time to be with us today. You guys all did a great job. And then we will close with a prayer prepared by Father Cyril's in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for inspiring us and for being a firm foundation for our school family. Please bless and protect us as we lift up your most holy name and place our hearts and lives in the care and mercy of your most sacred heart as we pray the words that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Thank you again uh, for joining us and please take a moment to go to that website and watch any of the videos um, or the uh, of the sessions that you may have missed. We look forward to hopefully seeing you in person very soon. Take care.